Hey, I'm Rosie Cruz. Welcome to Bay Area Independent Filmmakers. I'm here with a filmmaker locally. His name is Alric <laughs> Purcell. <laughs> Take three. Take three. <laughs> Um, I'm really excited. He's with Bursell Productions, and he is also the co-founder and host of MakingMoviesIsHard.com. It's a podcast you can listen to and subscribe with a bunch of independent filmmakers yep. all around the world. So welcome. Thank you for coming. I'm really excited to have you. Hey, Rosie. Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, and Making Movies is Hard. It's the podcast about the struggle of being an independent filmmaker. Yes, and, and it's a big struggle. <laughs> yeah, it's a big struggle. And uh, yeah, we talk to mostly local filmmakers in the Bay Area, mm -hmm. but we do have filmmakers from all over Los Angeles, New York. Um, we've had like, gosh, any international? No international. No international yet. filmmakers yet. Yeah, I mean, some people who are from other countries, but nobody who's actually making films in another country. Mm -hmm. um, I've been trying to get this one um, French composer that I'm friends with who's worked on a couple of my films mm -hmm. to be on the show, but she, it's like a language barrier thing. Mm -hmm. And her English is great, it's like amazing, but she like doesn't feel comfortable enough to do it. So. Oh, I see. So she wants the translator and it's just been it's a little difficult. But one day we'll start to get international filmmakers. Well, I think with all the technology out now, you right. might be able to find something that'll actually translate by yeah. you just conversing. Yeah, yeah, the Google Translate or yeah. something. Yeah, but that, that's really interesting. Um, I was actually going to start you off by asking you how you got started, but sure. I'm really interested in how you find your, your um, you know, your the, pe the people that you interview, and, yeah. and especially the person that you, you've worked with, the um, composer. Yeah, yeah, so, um, so the podcast was started by me and another local filmmaker, Timothy Plain, who recently left the show, um, which is, you know, unfortunate, but just the, the, the choice that he needed to make and for him and his life, basically. And so I've decided to push on and keep on doing the podcast on my own. And I've gathered, like, a group of uh, co-hosts who mm -hmm. I do episodes with. Mm -hmm. So it's, it started with previous guests of the show. And then now I just sort of try to find people who I think are, are good matches for the show and uh -huh. bring a different um, point of view than mine. Because I feel like the worst thing about having a co-host is someone who has your same exact experience and your same exact opinion. So I'm really trying to branch out and find people from different backgrounds uh -huh. um, who make different types of movies or even don't necessarily direct films but are you know doing something else in the filmmaking industry. So uh -huh. it's like creates a contrast. Uh -huh. um, but as for finding the guests, uh, it basically started with Timothy and I's network of people. Uh -huh. So, w and <laughs> to be honest, the first 20 episodes weren't even, there was no guests. It was just us talking. And then we decided, mm -hmm. like, because we weren't even thinking that it was going to be an interview show in the beginning, that it was just more about our struggles as independent filmmakers and sort mm -hmm. of trying to relate the things that we were dealing with to our audience and sort of have a conversation about, like, how we can make our films and get better and you know not make the same mistakes that we made before in the past and then it just sort of naturally branched out to having guests um, so yeah basically started with our Rolodexes and then from there it's just you know people will reach out to us sometimes and we'll have people on or you know maybe we'll watch a movie and be like oh my gosh I really gotta get that person on uh -huh. um, but you know it's been we've been trying to get bigger A-list guests on the show and that's been pretty difficult because, um, you know, we're not a big show and, you know, they want things like, you know, studios to record in and, you know, fancy <laughs> things like car services or, or whatnot. And we just don't have that capability, especially since we're in San Francisco where, you know, most of the more A-list people are in like Los Angeles or New yeah. York. So it just, you know, we're working our way up to that. But I think at the core, it's all about the independent filmmakers and talking mm -hmm. to the people who aren't like ultra successful yet so it's like trying to figure out how people who are just like our audience how are they making movies and how are they getting it done and then through that we can learn and grow and all just do a better job at, at getting our films made so what made you want to start a podcast well basically I, I was um, trying to figure out how to get my my first feature made like I'd been working on it for a couple of years at that point and I really wanted a mentor, like mm -hmm. a men mentor was something that I thought that would really be helpful for me and I'd try to get a, f a couple of mentors or reaching out to people like mostly in Los Angeles and the thing that I would really like end up happening is like they would be like, oh, do you live in La LA? And I'm like, no. And they're like, well, call me when you live in LA, basically. That was like the answer. And so I just got frustrated with that wow. sort of process 
And um, you know, I've had lots of fantastic mentors through my career, but they've all been more like video production mm -hmm. or like corporate video or commercial sort of mentors. Like there's not really a lot of like successful feature film directors in the Bay Area who've had wildly su successful careers. I mean, there are a few, but it's like, you know, if the Coen brothers are in Marin, like I'm not gonna <laughs> be able to get them to, <laughs> you know, take, like I can't buy them coffee. Uh, they're they're <laughs> well, kind of like, just I ask. mean, <laughs> I could, pff, yeah, I should, but um, you know, it's just, it's more difficult. So I started to look at blogs and then I kind of mm -hmm. discovered podcasts. And the first podcast I found was um, the Script Notes podcast. I don't know if you're familiar with those guys. I'm familiar, but I, I never really sit down to listen to a full episode. Yeah, so John August and Craig Mazin, they're, they're these two LA writers. And mm -hmm. I used to l read uh, John August's blog back in college, like in the uh, mid, early 2000s or whatever. Oh. And then I basically, that's where I started. I was like, oh, I remember that blog. That was great. And so I looked mm -hmm. that up and then Lo and behold, he had a podcast that had been going on for about 70, 80 episodes. Wow. And then I just like dove straight into that. And then once I was like caught up and like into that podcast, I was like, okay, well, where's the director podcast? And there really weren't any at that time. Like there were a okay. couple that had like been going and then like stopped. And then there was a few people who were talking about filmmaking, but it was more like businessy side stuff. Uh -huh. And there really wasn't um, a, f a filmmaking podcast about with two directors talking about their struggles as independent filmmakers. Mm -hmm. So then that's when I decided that, you know, maybe I should try to start one. And the first person I asked was Timothy Plain, and he immediately said yes. And then we, we started doing the, the show like two weeks later. And then like a year after that, <laughs> we discovered there was another uh, filmmaking podcast called Just Shoot It that had started at the exact same time as ours. Mm -hmm. And it was like the LA version of our podcast. And I always say, tell those guys, like if I had found their podcast, when we started our podcast, I would never, we would never start it because that was the exact podcast that I was wow. looking for. So the reason why we started it in the first place, just because it didn't exist at the time or we didn't, you know, we couldn't find it. So that, that was why we did it. And, you know, it's been an amazing experience to talk to all these filmmakers, um, you know, writers, directors, producers, and learn like, like through their struggles and like what they've done to, 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 you know, get their career started and to make their films. And hopefully I, I get to take a little bit of that knowledge and apply it to my own experience and then share it with everybody else too. So what was your favorite interview? Um, oh my goodness. I mean, geez, like we, we're almost at episode 200 now. We've been doing it for almost four years mm -hmm. and there's been so many amazing conversations. Um, let me think, but my, one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, well, we talked to, um, well, Hilton Day is a friend of mine. I don't know if you know him. He's a local assistant director. And his episode was really great because he just um, brought a lot of knowledge to the table and, and talked about how he went through his process of starting his career and getting mm -hmm. to where he is. And he's like, you know, assistant directing big movies now. Like he just did this one called Last Black Man in San Francisco, mm -hmm. which just played Sundance, is probably going to get a, a big release um, later this year, I think, uh, through A24. Mm -hmm. And so, like, he is like, you know, trajectory has been pretty amazing so that that's a really great episode um, and then we talked to um, Jared Hess of Napoleon Dynamite fame that was a really fun one that was our 100th episode um, which was really insightful and interesting and one of the things that we talk about a lot with all our guests is like whether or not you have to be in Los Angeles to have a career yeah and um, you know Jared never has lived in LA like his whole career he's been in uh, Utah I believe so wow. You know, and I asked him, like, when he made Napoleon Dynamite and when he, like, had his big success, I was like, well, did you ever have any pressure to move to Los Angeles from Utah? And he was like, no, ne never, never been a thing. And I think it's only true because he had Napoleon Dynamite. Like, if you have a movie that big, you can kind of do whatever you want. Yeah. But I think for, like, the rest of us, you know, maybe there's a lot of advantages to being in Los Angeles, especially if you're an actor, you know, because, like, that's where most of the work is. And it's just... It's kind of hard to um, make it happen outside of a big market like that, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it just really does depend on your audience and that's true. What are you shooting for, you know? Yeah. Um, so, how did you start off? I mean, what what was your your beginning years like, and what motivated yeah. you to become a professional filmmaker? Well, so I always loved movies. Movies have been like my favorite thing since I was like four years old, five years old. Like that was just my all my top <laughs> thing to do, you know, starting with like the Ninja Turtles movie um, back when I was young and then <laughs> Back to the Future and Ghostbusters and all that stuff. And 
I never thought that I could make movies because I was from Berkeley, you know, mm -hmm. and we didn't really, I didn't know anybody who made movies. Like my parents didn't know anybody who made movies. And it was just like, that happens in Los Angeles. That's like a magical thing that happens somewhere else in Hollywood, which I don't have any access to or ability to get. So I never really, in my early years, I never really thought it was possible. And then when I was in high school, I, uh, there was a video production program in my school at Albany High and I was eligible to join it when I was a sophomore because I was a little bit older. Mm -hmm. Like you had to be 16 to be a part of that class. And so I took it in, in my sophomore year and you know, that's when I first you know, got my hands on a camera and from there it was just like, that's it. Like this is all I want to do. Like I, I, from editing my first like soccer promo, you know, reel to reel, a, a, you know, A, a B editing, you know, videotape uh -huh. to videotape. That was, wow. I was hooked, you know. <laughs> And then the next year we got Final Cut Pro at my school and like, you know, IMAX and editing software and mm -hmm. digital cameras that weren't the old, you know, SVHS cameras. And then like, you know, started to make my first short films in high school and just, that's when I knew that that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then I just, ever since then, I've been just pushing forward, trying to figure out how to, to make movies and, and get, my, get my stuff made and figure out how to manage a career and what does that mean? And, what am I going to do for a living and all that? And, you know, I went to SF State for um, radio and television. Uh -huh. And, uh, yeah, to did like five internships there and just started my career off, um, you know, PAing and stuff like that. And, you know, just uh, was always a step, like, like always trying to figure out how to get to, you know, working on movies. And, um, you know, I, I worked on a show called Trauma that shot here. Yes. You familiar? Yeah, I was actually in one episode. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah. I worked on like I think three episodes. It was like twelve days or something mm -hmm. as a PA. Um, but uh, but yeah, then at the same time I was working at a production company in Berkeley, and as an as an intern. But they was they were, they were allowing me to like get my hands on some really real equipment, like the old Red One camera uh, that had just come out like uh -huh. around that time. And so it was like, wow, do I want to learn how to like build a Red camera, or do I want to like get coffee? on trauma and you know in order to get the internship i had to commit to a certain amount of days uh -huh. so then i ended up turning down days on trauma to work at studio b and then you know they stopped calling me because when you turn down a couple days they're just like on to the next down guy. The, yeah uh, the yeah, list. yeah exactly so that was sort of like how i got started and then you know working at studio b films for a few years and i eventually became a rentals manager there and i did that for two years mm -hmm. um that was sort of like my base in the bay area and like how i got all the you know got started and met people and got my connections and you know ever since then i've been freelance um and just bouncing around from job to job doing all kinds of stuff you know mm -hmm. because it's not like i mean i'm sure there's some people here and i know there are a lot of people here who do one thing they're like i'm a cinematographer like i'm a producer and like that's all i do but you know, since the market's pretty small here and there's not a lot of work, I found myself doing a variety of things. So I just, I shoot, I edit, and I produce. And that's sort of like those, those are the three things that I do mm -hmm. um, to keep myself afloat, you know, and keep going. And, mm -hmm. you know, trying to do directing and to transition to being a director on paid jobs, but that seems to be a very difficult thing to do. And like I've done a few things here and there, like directed a couple commercials, a couple corporate video sort of things, but. I'm eventually trying to transition to doing the directing full time, but you know, for now, it's like, yeah, if I if I have to shoot for a living, I mean, I love it. It's like really fun. Anything video related is like, I don't know. I just have such a blast doing it. Yeah, so. I think we all have a blast. Being, oh yeah, uh, involved in production at every level. It's yeah. just, you know, that's where all the the um, the great feedback comes from, and you know, oh, you yeah. you know, you're you're gonna see something in the end, and there's a product, and yeah, you know, wh wh wherever it goes, we're all you know just become really proud of what we do. Yeah. Um, I do love production. It's it's a lot of work, but I do love it. Yeah. It's, it's great. Um, I, yeah. But last time we talked, yeah, uh, sure. we had coffee. Yeah. <laughs> um, As you, you were do. talking about your features. So yeah, can you yeah. dive into that and sure. what you're working on? So yeah, my feature film, The Alternate, um, I've been working on it for, oh, oh gosh, I think it's like five years now at mm -hmm. this point. And uh, it's a uh, Basically a loose um, ad adaptation of my first short film, Strange Thing, um, which I made back in 2012. Yes. And I say first short film, it's not really my first, it's like the first one that I did professionally with a crew and then I actually submitted to film festivals. Um, I, I did submit some of my really early work to film festivals, they didn't mm -hmm. get in and it was sort of silly to submit like my high school type projects to <laughs> film festivals. but. Uh, 
but yeah, but strange thing was like my first like I'm taking this seriously. Mm -hmm. Like I've got a 20 person crew. Like I'm doing all wow. following the process. You know, like doing everything the way that you would on a on a bigger budget project to like kind of teach myself like uh -huh. how to do it. And you know, I had a cinematographer, like three person camera team. You know, grip and lighting, three ton truck, the whole deal. Mm -hmm. You know, got a actors from Los Angeles. I tried to cast locally and uh, didn't find anyone who was just right. So I ended up going to L.A which was like kind of a betrayal to my Bay Area community. But, you know, I just, it was the right move for mm -hmm. that project, you know? Well, I think it's always important to bridge the communities. Yeah. Yeah, we can learn from each other. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, there are a lot of amazing, fantastic actors here in the Bay Area. And mm -hmm. on my next short brother, I, I casted locally um, besides two roles. But for the, the main female lead, I, um, you know, found an actor here who was just amazing. And I continued to work with her mm -hmm. on future projects. Uh, but um, but yeah, so back to the feature, that was a question. So the alternate is uh, basically this, this thing that's like gonna be my first feature film. I've been working on it forever. I've been raising money for it for two years now. And I'm at a place where we're gonna shoot this year in 2019, one way or another. Like even if we have to do it for like just the money that we have raised at this moment, which mm -hmm. isn't, isn't so bad, you know, but you know, I partnered with a producer, uh, Jeffrey Allard, who's done 14 feature films. Um, he started with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remakes were his first movies that he made back in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And since then, he's done a bunch of horror movies, a bunch of thrillers, some sci-fi, kind of, and then some more like family family drama type stuff. Ping Pong Summer was a movie that he produced. He did a bunch of uh, movies with the Butcher Brothers. Um, they're mm -hmm. like local nor Northern California directors. I think, I think one's still here and one's in Los Angeles now. But... Uh, he did a bunch of movies with them and yeah he's just been a really great supporter of the project and you know we've been doing pitches together for the last year like trying to get investors to join us on our journey you know um, but it's at the point now where I've got a, a deadline it's like you know the summer like whatever I have at the summer that's like what we're gonna move forward with you know and I'm really excited that I get to finally make this feature after all this time and wow putting all this energy and creativity into it are you going to be casting locally as well? Well, I guess it depends, right? <laughs> it's like if we get more more funds and we reach the goal that we have, that we're going to put offers out to um, actors in Los Angeles mm -hmm. um, and try to get somebody who's um, got a face that you've recognized at uh -huh. least, um, if it's not a name, you know, like somebody who has you know been a supporting character on a TV show that you may have heard of, or uh -huh. somebody in that kind of level. Um, and then if we don't have enough money to do that, if we can't even get that level, then we'll, we'll go with uh, local actors who, um, I did a teaser trailer for the film back in September. Mm -hmm. So we worked with some really talented people there. So I know there's some really great actors who could pull this off mm -hmm. locally. Um, but you know, the unfortunate nature of the business is that if you don't have like talent that is recognizable to any degree, it's very hard to get into film festivals and it's really hard to get any kind of like, you know, good deal for your film. Yes. So it's like, it's just, it's an unnecessary evil, unfortunately, to like just cast with, with known talent, you know? Well, it is business and yeah. um, yes. And if you want to be able to have your movie, you know, take some long strides, you have to take some of those right. um, things into account and build on talent. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really important that filmmakers, especially here, understand some of those processes, whether they want to do it or not. It's totally up to the individual, but I think it's really important to understand that. Yeah. And you make a great point there, what you have to do in order to get your film into festivals or um, make some money back, because you're, you right. know, it's a pretty, it, it's a, you have to pay for things. Like right not just talent on camera, you have to pay for talent behind the camera right. too. So, exactly. you know, everybody wants to make a living. I yeah. think that's important. Yeah, and I mean, it's like hopefully you're gonna find the person that's perfect for the role, who also has the most exposure that you can, you know, that you can afford basically in your movie. So it's not like I'm just like, oh, any actor that we've heard of, I want in my movie. It's like, it's gotta be the right actor yeah. for the right role who also hits, checks those boxes, you know? Mm -hmm. And then um, from there, like the lower, uh, the smaller roles, then I can, you know, put in the, the wonderful actors that I've worked with in the Bay Area and mm -hmm. put them in the places where, you know, where the, they fit right. Um, but yeah, it's, it's challenging. I mean, you know, just, I think every aspect of, of filmmaking has a struggle or a challenge associated with it, but I think getting the, the funding together and getting the resources to make your films, that's like the universal, issue that everybody deals with 
uh -huh. no matter what level you're at. If you're at like the smaller, like you're gonna make your movie for under $10,000, like that's a struggle. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna make your movie <laughs> for $10 million and you're, you know, whatever, like a known filmmaker out in the world, like mm -hmm. it's still a struggle. Like everybody struggles with the funding, yeah. you know? And I, I listen to a lot of other podcasts with, um, you know, well-known names and stuff. And that's what everyone talks about that. It's so it's not unique to us. It's just an issue that's in the industry forever. So, you know, I, I always think like, I used to think like, oh man, I'm, so this is going to be hard like to raise the money for this. But after I make my first feature, it's going to be much easier to raise the money for the next one. And what I'm realizing and preparing myself for is that no, it's not going to get any easier. It's going to be hard no matter what, no matter how much success you have, it's going to be a challenge. So just get used to it, get ready and, and figure out how to, how to make your movies happen. Yeah. So do you see yourself doing that in 10 years, in 20 years, or where exactly oh, do you see yourself? Well, I would love to, I, I think no matter what happens in my career, in my life, I'm always going to make movies. Mm -hmm. Like that's just going to be part of me forever. Like, you know, even if I'm 80 and, you know, I've had a long career in editing or whatever, like, and, mm -hmm. and never reached the Hollywood studio system or whatever, like I'm always going to make movies. Um, but I hope that in 10 years that I would be you know, directing films on a regular basis, you know, or either be long format or short format, and that, um, you know, having a budget to do so. And it doesn't yeah. have to be a big budget, just any <laughs> kind of budget, whatever you got, you know, I'm, I'm happy. But I just wanna be making movies, you know, and, and never lose the inspiration and the creativity and, and the spark to go out and, and tell a story, because that's the thing that I love yeah. doing, and that's what, I've got this thing inside me that I gotta get out, and until I get it out, I'm just gonna keep on doing it. And I, and I have a feeling that it's never gonna be gone. I'm always gonna have this spark, this yeah. thing to just boom. I think we all have that flame. So right. what's your favorite, directing or editing? Um, I think, I, I love editing. Like I, and then I'm, I'm one of those people like you put me in a box in a room for, <laughs> for 10 hours, like you know, with a project and a goal, like I'll have a good time and I'll, and I'll figure something out. Mm -hmm. um, but I think directing on set like telling a story that's your story or even someone else's story that you, you've you got a connection to and mm -hmm. like getting the performances out of the actors and working with the actors and the crew to, to, to tell the story the best way possible. I think that's where I have the most fun. Um, but unfortunately, like you don't, you don't get to do that every day, you know, even when you're, um, you know, a more successful filmmaker that like mm -hmm. that's a, the smallest part of the process is the shooting. It's the, the prep and the editing. That's like what the biggest part of it is. Yeah. Um, so I, I live for those whatever, like if it's a short film, three to five days, if it's a feature, hopefully 20 days maybe to like tell my story, like that, that's the most fun part. But then, you know, I mean, I also really enjoy the editing and, and the problem solving part mm -hmm. too. Yeah, I don't think people realize how short pro actual production can be. <laughs> right. Like you can compress it into a day or two days yeah. on a short film, you know, or stretch it out as long as, you know, I've, I've done a... 12 minute short film that was stretched out to six days. Oh wow, six I know, days. I know, they must Fancy. have had a lot of money. But, wow. um, <laughs> but also I've done a feature that was done in less than, I think it was like 14 or 15 days. Yeah. And it the when it was all done, it was beautiful and I was yeah. really shocked. But I don't think people realize how short production can be. Yeah. And it's great and it's fun and you know, that's like that icing and the oh, yeah. sugar on the cake and stuff. Yeah. Oh, I have one more question for you. Sure. If you were to go back in time and find your 18 year old self, what advice or what would you say to that, that gentleman back then? What would you tell him to get them through the trying times well, to where you are now? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think if I could go back and talk to my younger self, I would tell them or him to just not limit yourself. Like don't put limits, don't put qualifiers, just go after everything that you wanna do and take every bit of advice that you get and then just go for it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think when I was younger, I had a lot more opportunity than I thought I did and I sort of didn't really go after things in a way that I wish I could have. And I, I you know, had lots of wonderful experiences and I did a lot of awesome things when I was starting out as a filmmaker, but I think there was a time where I could have really just gone after everything, mm -hmm. and I just didn't for whatever reason, you know, whether it be like, you know, a relationship I was in, or feeling nervous or scared to like really take the leap, like to like move to Los Angeles, for example, mm -hmm. or move to New York, or, you know, go after that internship on the big show that you really want, you know, but 
Like I think I did it just like a little bit of that stuff, but there's like another level of persistence that I could have done when I was younger, and I probably could have, you know, achieved a lot more at a, at a, at a younger age. And I think, you know, that's what I, if I could go back, that's probably what I would told, tell myself was like, don't worry about all the other bullshit. Just like mm -hmm. go after your dream and just like be completely, um, you know, don't 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 have any compromise towards your dream. Just go for it. And no matter what anyone says, if they're like, oh, you shouldn't do that. Like that's not a good idea. Like oh, you're never it's never gonna work out. Like don't listen to the the, the criticism mm -hmm. or the haters basically, mm -hmm. and just go after it no matter what. And I see a lot of young people doing that, and it's always inspirational to me when I meet a young person who's you know, making their movie at 19 or, mm -hmm. you know, made two features and they're 22 or something. And I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, like that's really a special thing. And I think, you know, if I could go back, I would try to give myself that advice to like go after it and not, you know, you know, give myself excuses basically to, to not go after it. Those are wise words. Thank you. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> well, thank you for having me on the show. This has been a lot of fun. So Are we already done? Almost. Oh my I just goodness. want people to know where to find you. <laughs> okay. So if they were wanting to look up, you know, some of your work and stuff, and can you tell us your social media handles, sure. which, where to find you on social media and sure. your website? Again? Yeah, I'm, I'm not as active on social media as a lot of other people, but you can find me on Twitter at Ulrich B. I'm on Instagram at, at Ulrich B as well. Um, and then my website's BurcellProductions.com which hopefully will have a facelift soon, but uh, you can go there and see all my, my, my short films and some of my corporate work. Um, and then makingmoviesishard.com for the podcast. Please check out the podcast for sure. We're also on iTunes, yes. Making Movies Is Hard. Um, and we're on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. I think all MMIH podcast. Got so it. you can find us there too. Got it. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Rosie. So thank you all for coming and watching. Um, you can follow Alric on um, Facebook and Twitter. Um, download his podcast, listen to it. He has an amazing uh, list of episodes. <laughs> um, I've watched the last two, they're great. And, um, you know, come check out our Facebook page. We'll post some of Alric's uh, old, uh, older trailers mm -hmm. and um, his websites as well. We'll see you next time.